Bruce was, was born under very positive conditions with respect to his father. He was a great, uh, you know, movie star and, uh, and a uh, person that did the physicalness of, of the uh, programs that he, whenever he came to this country, he, he went through all the Chinatowns and did, did the, all the glamorous stuff there to perpetuate, you know, the, the Chinese way of life and all that. And, and uh, of course, uh, Bruce, having been raised under those standards and been a very gregarious young man to begin with, uh, he had that certain unique capability within his mind structure to be able to look at something and, and separate the wheat from the chaff, so to speak. So he was right on whatever, whatever he, you know, opportunity that it was facing him. And Bruce was not only the greatest martial artist in, in my mind, but he had the great philosophy to go with it. Without the philosophy, you're just a human being. I don't care whether you're a superhuman machine or not. If you don't have that in your heart, the spiritual morality, the philosophicalness, you're not, you're not going to be a whole person. And so th this is the, the main criteria that, that my son Andy and myself work with when we bring new people that, that call us and get in touch with us and say they want to learn Jeet Kune Do. That's the first thing that we, that we share with them is that it has to come from your heart and your mind and, and, it, and that's where equality starts. Well, 1959, Bruce uh, had, uh, well, actually, Bruce was born in uh, San Francisco. He was born when his father came over with a troop of entertainers, and so he was an American citizen by birth. But when he became 18 years of age, during that era, everybody that became 18 years old, they were eligible for the draft, and so they got this postcard that said, greetings from the president, you've got to put your three years of military service in it. So Bruce was sent over to, to uh, San Francisco, where he was born, but uh, it turned out that there was, he, he didn't know anybody there, and I, th I think this is conjecture on my part, but uh, Ruby Chow's husband, Ping, was uh, formerly uh, uh, part of the, part of the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, entertainers with Bruce's dad, and he met Ruby in New York, I guess it was, and, and uh, he left the uh, troupe and married her, and then they moved out to Seattle, and she had a restaurant at the time, but this is conjecture on my part, but when Bruce landed in San Francisco by himself at 18, uh, he didn't know anybody, and uh, I think maybe his father might have had something to do with it. probably said, well, look, uh, Ruby, I need to have you do me a favor. Uh, can you, if I send him up to Seattle, can you look after him? And so anyhow, he came to Seattle in 1959 and, and lived in, uh, it was a huge uh, house that was up there, was turned into a restaurant had about four or five gabled uh, parsh portions of the house, and he lived uh, about halfway up to the ceiling of that restaurant. And, and so that's, that's when I met him. He, uh, he was going to school at uh, Edison Vocational School, which is uh, uh, Seattle Community College now. And uh, during that time, uh, he was walking down Broadway, and uh, there was a young man named Jesse Glover that was walking the same same avenue there and they met and of course if anybody met Bruce during that era the first thing that came into my conversation was martial art probably and so they 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 got together and, and then they started working out together with a bunch of other young young people and every year even today uh, in Seattle they have this uh, big seafair pageantry where they select a queen for the city of Seattle for the year and during that during that pageantry uh, all the ethnicities, like the Jewish people, the, the black people, the Chinese, Asian people, they all have their night to do their program. And uh, when, they, when Jesse and uh, Ed Hart and James DeMille and those guys were, were you know, a lot of them were ex-GIs that were into martial arts, and uh, they went to this program on uh, Chinatown there, and they saw this young 18-year-old that came on the stage, and he uh, demonstrated something called Gung Fu, which was a Chinese martial art, and also the cha-cha dance. He was all Hong Kong champion cha-cha dancer. So when, and my, my family had a grocery store at the time, and one day uh, one of the guys came in, uh, one of those guys came into my store and said they met this young man who was 18 years old, and he said, you gotta meet him. And I said, well, how the hell could a young man, 18 years old, you know, be comparable to some of these other Asian guys from Japan that, that are martial arts are in their 30s, and 
he said, no, he said, you gotta, you gotta just meet this guy. And so they made arrangements for me to go to uh, the University of Washington, part of the campus there where they had a baseball uh, field there and they were gonna be working out there on a Sunday. So I was invited to go down there and meet him. And so when I went down there and met him, why, the first thing they said was, uh, do something to Bruce. Well, I knew right then and there that I was up for something, but I, I didn't know what to do, but I, I couldn't be chicken out and not do anything. So when we s s squared off with each other, I took and threw a haymaker at him like that. And before I knew it, he had that blocked and, and I felt those punches coming, just missing me by a fraction of an inch from my face. And he had me on the ground and he had me in a lock and, and, you know, and I was subdued in, a, in probably less than a minute. And what happened uh, at that point was that uh, since I had just been into the concentration internment camp for four years and went through a lot of, in, you know, just embarrassing pe episodes where they called me a Jap and wouldn't let me into, a, into a different places and walk into a restaurant, they wouldn't serve me. I, I was less than a human being, and, but uh, I was privy to be able to meet Bruce and so when I got into the club, <clears throat> even though I was older but smaller physically and and uh, just really uh, not able to, you know, to really uh, hone in on anything because I was I was just really less than a human being at that point. And and Bruce, uh, when he when he met me, uh, he went through Hong Kong uh, and uh, when it was a British colony, and he he went through discrimination himself because the British soldiers beat up on the kids whenever they saw him out in the streets. And when I started uh, practicing martial arts, I'd say seven years old. And the reason is that was first day of school because I came from China on May the 1st, 1934, and I was five years old. And my father held me out until I was seven to go to school because I couldn't speak English. So on first day of school, all the, uh, the hillbillies, <laughs> I was the only colored person in, uh, in the school because he was wide in Arkansas with a population of 95 people. And uh, they start gathering around me singing a song. And I said, oh, wow, I'm really popular. So when I got home, my father said, how was school? I said, great, everybody loved me. They sing to me. He said, what did they sing? I said, Ching Chong Chinaman. And then he got red in the face. He said, you know, they don't like you. They are demeaning your race. I said, oh, really? So I went back uh, to school the next day, and the teacher uh, called uh, us to, to have a little softball game, you know, for recess. So it had me to play first base. And this kid uh, hit a, uh, a run and comes on the first base. He looks up at me and he says, chink. Pop. Down he went. And next thing I knew, I was in the air getting spanked by the, the playground teacher. I would say my beginning of martial arts started at that moment. And then I would get teased and get, get uh, picked on as I went to school. And I found out my cousins all quit school because they didn't want to be picked on by these bullies. So we ended up running the grocery stores with their parents which I didn't want, want to do that because I, I hated the grocery store because there's too much work. So I fought back and as I had more fights, I got more interested. And about, uh, I guess 11 or 12 years old, I was looking through a Montgomery Ward catalog and I saw a boxing book for sale and it was fundamental boxing by Barney Ross who was a world middleweight champion uh, back in the 30s. So I got the book and I started reading it from cover to cover and put up a pillow in my uh, room and I'm punching that pillow, working those jabs, hooks and uppercuts as I understood it in that book. And then I realized, wait a minute, when I got in the fight it was a piece of cake because most of those uh, kids would come at me like this and I would stick and move, I would stick and move. And, and then eventually I would smack with that right hand and down they go. And then of course I was getting trouble because uh, if we do it on the playground, you know, the teacher would get us. So uh, after that, I, I went to college and they had a boxing team and I joined the boxing team. So my first martial arts really was boxing. And then from there on, I, uh, uh, of course, I, I met judo uh, instructors, jujitsu instructors, uh, uh, 
Taekwondo instructors, and, and I train under all of them. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, on this technique, uh, uh, every time we do something, there's a purpose. And this one is uh, what I call the three Ds, deflect, uh, uh, dissolve, and destroy. And how we do that is uh, go by that old Chinese saying that you, you take four ounces of deflection against 4,000 pounds of force. So you got evade you got uh, uh, deflect. And so the other uh, aspect of this is you hit the pressure points. You don't want to just hit anywhere. You have a purpose in mind, the target. So on this first technique, uh, Adam's going to throw a straight right, and I'm going to deflect. See how I, I avoid the, uh, you know, avoid the power? And then with this hand, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, uh, trap it. And then now I'm going to hit this nerve here, and when I hit this nerve, I'm going to hit here at this pressure point here, followed through with a left hook and an uppercut. So, uh, so these are the points that I'm hitting. So, boom, 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 bop, bop, bop. My father used to tell me all these stories about these Kung Fu masters and how good they were, and, and I always was curious. But in the 50s, when I came out to California, I couldn't find anybody who would tell me where there was a Kung Fu school. It was so secret. And so, uh, of course, I, I came out of California because I'm a United Methodist minister, so they transferred me to Sacramento to serve a church there. And so I, I, I uh, was invited to speak at, at a church in San Francisco. So after I spoke uh, at a church in San Francisco back in 1957 or 58, something like that, I said, today, I'm going down to Chinatown, and I'm going to find me a Kung Fu school. So I went to Chinatown to eat on Grant Street, and I saw an old man standing on the corner uh, on Grant Street, and I said to him in my, you know, uh, broken Chinese, I said, uh, uh, Mister, uh, 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 is there a Kung Fu school around here? And he said, oh, there's one down there, and there's one up there. And I said, which one is best? He said, well, it's up to you. He said, that one down there run by an old man, that one up there run by a younger guy. And so I decided, well, my old man might be better. So, so I would I ask him a direction. I went down there and I got in this little, little basement. I walked down the steps and, and, and I, I saw this sandbag there and it had blood stain all over it. And, and, and nobody there. And I said, anybody here? And then I hear somebody running water in, in this little bathroom. So I went over and looked and, and it was this little short guy and we were talking about Helio Gracie. Well, he's about the same size. Little short guy, they're shaving, you know. And I said, are you the Sifu? And he says uh, in Chinese, yes. And then he said, what do you want? And then uh, he kept on shaving. And when he finished, he came out, I told him what I wanted. I said, I'd like to learn Kung Fu. He said, why? So he, he, he drilled me, you know. Finally, he said, well, uh, when can you come train? I said, oh, I can come on Fridays because I had to uh, drive from Sacramento to San Francisco, you see. I said, we'll come Friday. Every Friday, I'll come train. He said, okay. He said, uh, $15 a month. You come, I see, you know, how long you stay with it. And so that was Choi Lefight, uh, is Professor uh, Lo Bun. So I trained there for about three years. And then I was curious. I said, I'm going to go back up there and check that Sioux Lum School with that younger guy and see who it was. So I walked into the place. It was, it was right next to the First Baptist Church in San Francisco. And uh, so I went in, and, and there was a guy standing in front of the mirror doing uh, forms with, with, with about a five-pound dumbbells in his hand. And I thought that was interesting. So I went over and uh, watched him a while, and he turned around and said, Hi, my name is Jimmy Lee. <laughs> and, and, and so I told him what it was, and he said, uh, Are you a Kung Fu, uh, Kung Fu uh, practitioner? I said, Yeah, I, I, I trained down at the Choi Lifa School. He said, Why don't you come up here? It's better. You know, and then we got talking, and then I said, yeah, maybe I'll try it. And then he, he introduced me to uh, Professor T.Y. Wong, the instructor. Well, I trained there for about uh, a year, and then Jimmy and uh, the professor had a falling out. And, uh, and so uh, over $10, uh, believe me, uh, the professor accused Jimmy of cheating him out of $10 because of some books he, he sold. So Jimmy said, screw that, I'm going to go to my, back to my house and train there. If you want to come, you're welcome. 
So I followed him. I, I went uh, to his house and started training, and of course that led to a meeting of Bruce Lee later. But, uh, but that's how I, I started with Seal Lum. I trained about a year over there, and then I trained uh, with the rest of the time with uh, Jimmy until he ran into uh, G uh, Bruce. Then he started taking, uh, started training in, uh, in uh, uh, Wing Chun. Okay, the night, next one, he may, he, uh, he's gonna swing the right hand, I'm gonna deflect. See, I don't uh, block out, I, I deflect. And then soon I deflect, I said, bang, here. Hit here, bang, 